the game number two for the World Championship 2020 is all about to begin. Elves against Isengard, King Mustafa against Lukat. Pretty damn good. Hey, what's up? Ota K O Takeover. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to the stream, dude. Denied. Denied. <laughs> all right. Is picking number two a big advantage? Kinda, because you are able to count your opponent. You know, kinda. But yeah. Alright, on the right side we have the red Elvin player King Mustafa, who was, who was pre-picking the Elvin faction. Random pick is always allowed, by the way, in this tournament as well. And on I the left side, we have the orange Isengard player Lukat. Hello YouTube, by the way. If you, are, if you guys are watching over at YouTube right now, I mean not right now, but later on from the video, make sure to tune in in the live streams. We're gonna stream many, many tournament games within the next days. Alright, Elves against Isengard, El Clasico, good against evil, I like it. Lukat likes to play Isengard a lot, and I think Isengard is also being a solid pick against the Elven faction. <laughs> Hello YouTube. <laughs> Rambo for 5000, welcome to the stream. Alright, we have two furnaces into the Uruk pit, and on the right side we have two Malon trees into the barracks. No, actually he's cancelling the barracks, going for the third Malon tree first, and I'm assuming he's gonna go for the stable. And I think that's gonna be also the case. So he's gonna potentially go for a stable delete. As we know, they are quite powerful, those Rivendell Lancers. <laughs> Lila, Lila Yeppe, welcome to the stream. Yo, 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 Koida, welcome. Alright, uh, it's gonna be a stable delete. Uh, luckily for Lukat, he's gonna start with those pikemen. So I'm assuming he's gonna go for the creep. Let's see if this is going to be the case. Um, at the same time, he's building the barracks. So he's definitely gonna need some of those archers to protect his Malon trees because when the stable delete doesn't work and I think he was kind of losing a bit time because he wanted to go for the barracks first, cancelled the barracks, went for the stable, so lost a couple of seconds, nothing too crazy. Iliubata, welcome, Longhorse, welcome. Alright. Um, yeah, pikemen are on the field now. For the Isengard player, he can go for the push, but I'm assuming he's gonna go for the creep here on the work layer at the left side of the map for of Eisen. And while the lances are coming soon, I think he's gonna get some archers, so he has some units around this area to keep his Malon trees alive. And the second unit from Lukat are gonna be those Urukai. I mean, Urukai are always a solid choice, they are quite expensive, they are also quite tanky, as you know. Hey, Puff Puff, welcome to the stream. Um, and taking them down is quite challenging because, you know, when you, when they are, especially when they are being war chanted and they are using the shield wall formation in the whole ground stance, they can take a lot of damage and sustain that. They have a lot of tankiness, as you know. The Vandal Lenses are going forward. The next units from Lukat are gonna be those pikemen, which is the right call, but he might still lose one of these furnaces, potentially this one, but this one is gonna be taken down for sure. Okay, Isengard is going for an attack. And he's just losing a lot of time here with those Lancers. He can't, he can't approach them because there are pikemen around. So King Mustafa couldn't decide for a second what he's gonna do. Lorien warriors are on the field, but no archers. And buff is available for Luka. This can hurt the Alvin player big time. He's actually building even a, even a stage show here in between the structures and positioning the Lorien warriors. Like, kinda trying to protect this uh, Malon tree. Gonna commit to the stable. Which is okay, I would say, if you can take down a production building that early into the game. But I would say, also say that King Mustafa is potentially not gonna make much more Lancers. I'm even surprised that he didn't demolish this one. But the stable is gonna be taken down. And on top of that, it's like a win-win situation right now for Lukas. Because those Lancers, they went all the way back to defend. But yet, they can't even approach this army. On the bright side, actually King Mustafa was starting with the fourth side. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, he was even close, he was almost able to defend this one. I think it can, it could be much worse for King Mustafa, to be honest with you. Losing the stable is bad, but remember, he was already able to save those Lancers here. So he has one Lancer Battalion on the field. And he's not gonna even go for the stable anymore, he's gonna build the second barracks instead. Okay. He's gonna go for the creep at the right side of the river. Remember, Lukat was already able to creep this one at the left side. Um... During all this time, Lorien warriors are moving from the bottom left side to the side of Isengard. Isengard so far is pretty much untouched. We have 410 command points for the Elven player King Mustafa on the right side. The second barracks is almost up. One and a half power points almost collected. 
On the other side, we have three power points collected for Lucas. We have Sharku on the field, a great counter to clumped units. I think whenever we have seen Sharku against the Elven faction, oh, this Sharku is a thief. He was able to steal one part of the treasure. I like it. He's gonna be a great choice against the Lancers, but he's also gonna be a great choice, boys, against the clumped units from the Elven player. Because as we know, Elves, they like to clump, so they can deal massive damage in those all-out fights. And we have seen already a couple of times, if Sharko manages to get into the backline, his splash damage can deal massive damage, boys. Okay, at the same time, Elven player is creeping at the bottom right side. He was already able to take this creep. The builder is getting attacked from Sharku. Sharku is not dealing too much damage to the builder, but it looks like King Mustafa is actually not paying attention, but he does now and will be able to save the builder. At the same time, he was trying to take down one of the furnaces, but I'm assuming Lukat should be able to protect this one with those Urukai and those crossbowmen. Almost five power points collected. This furnace is under attack. Uh, five power points potentially gonna go into the Kribin for the debuff. The furnace is gonna be taken down, but you know, Mustafa has to be careful. That's the only Lancer Battalion he has on the field. So overcommitting might not be the greatest call, but it looks like he will get away. He needs to make a well here to heal up those uh, Lancers because there are only four left and they are only level one. Okay, Sharko was able to take down the furnace. He was also able to keep the builder busy building this wall hub. So that actually has a lot of impact during all this time. King Mustafa was only able to use one of his two builders. And Isengard is gonna go for the attack. We have Warchan almost available, and if he wants to, he can also go for the Keef Bats now. Okay, so the group stage, guys, for the World Championship is gonna be pretty much insane. We have actually a group like Mr. Smog, uh, Irvi, May Shadow Fax, and Sorry in one group. That's absolute fiesta. I'm quite excited about the matches, what's gonna happen within the next following days. So in order to not miss those games, be sure to, to be connected to our Discord community because all the announcements are going to be made always there. Okay, Warcham was used uh, and the problem is the Elven player doesn't even have buff. He started with the Foresight as you can see, but he has almost now 5 power points collected. Now he should be going definitely for the, for the rallying call in my opinion. Charku is managing to get into the backline, Mustafa is trying to organize his army, trying to you know, put pressure on this Sharku and force him back. Rallying Call was finally used. Isengard player doesn't go for the Kribane just yet. He has almost 10 power points collected. That can actually turn into the Devastation, which is really helpful to get insta money. Uh, that's a risky move from those Lancers, by the way. Those crossbowmen are weak against Lancers, but they are being still buffed. That's the only Lancer Battalion King Mustafa has on the field. Will he lose them? And I think the answer is gonna be a big yes. The only Lancer Battalion from King Mustafa has been taken down. He doesn't have a stable up on the field anymore. That means no more Lancers gonna follow up any soon. That again means um, he doesn't need to be worried about harassment anymore. It's really good. He has these two furnaces level 2 already. This one is gonna be turning to level 2 as well in a second. We have 560 command points for the Elven player. Two and a half power points, almost three power points collected after rallying call foresight. On the other side, we have Devastation already picked and used for the Isengard player. That's actually huge. And the money will be invested into Lords and into possibly even more units. Remember, he has double barracks, so he needs to keep spamming all the time. And again, the fact that Isengard has quite expensive units to recruit will make you need much more money. That's why building lumber mills now is a great choice. Okay, this fight should be looking good for the Isengard player. Lourdes is being able to kill those archers slowly but surely. Once he's level 5, the leadership is gonna be unlocked and it's quite impactful as you know. Sharku is just dealing as much damage as he possibly can. He's already level 5 actually, that's insane. Double barracks, both barracks are level 1 only. And remember the only Lancer battalion he had has been taken down. But on the bright side, he's able to kill some of these furnaces at the top right side from Lukat. Uh, 625 against 610, so command point wise, it's actually quite equal. And also the fact that Mustafa has also those uh, starting Malone trees up on the field. He only lost one of them early on. They are both level 2, which is pretty good. The transition into the Mirkwoods is gonna hurt Isengard a lot. I would really hope to see a Saruman on the field from Isengard's player. And I would also say that Kribane is gonna potentially be needed just to make the enemy units weaker so you can potentially win those fights. With the leadership of Lourdes, I mean, we have two heroes on the field from Isengard's player Lukat against no heroes so far from the Alvin player King Mustafa. But I like the way he is actually pushing through both sides. He has also some peasants coming from this inn at the bottom left side. 
and also potentially peasants will be following up from this in at the top right. So Lukat has to split his army. Luckily he has two heroes, so I think the time is gonna make those heroes pretty strong as he will keep killing units all the time, especially lords with the carnage, with the pin and with the leadership ability. It's gonna be very impactful. DGP, welcome. Hey lords, welcome to the stream, dude. Alright, Siege works is up on the field, so no Saruman. He's gonna try to go for the Siege immediately. Um, elves, they are pretty weak against Siege, but again, Isengard's Ballistas are not the greatest Siege weapons in the game against units. They are gonna be great and impactful against structures, obviously, but they are not as powerful as like trebuchets with Firestone upgrades and catapults from Mordor. Hey, Black Knight. Thank you for the four man. Four months, thank you so much. And welcome back. Appreciate your, appreciate your sub a lot means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you. Alright, Sharku is level 5.5, boys. We have a lot of units here on the field, as you can see. Upgrade to level 2. That's gonna make... Uh, that's gonna give him the chance to get Ballistas on the field. There are a lot of units from King Mustafa. I mean, what Lukat should be doing all the time is harassment. He's gonna go for the bal uh, Ballista expansion, by the way, around the fortress. This Lumber Mill is gonna be taken down. He's ne he needs to go for harassment because Elven player is just getting too much money at this point. He has indeed... Look... He lost so many furnaces because most of his furnaces were unprotected at the top right side. On the other side, we have uh, 760 command points for the Elven player. Tom Bombadil missing the son son uh, Sonic Song ability. I mean, there is not much to blast anyway. Lurt is diving in but will get knocked down from Tom Bombadilo and will be taken down afterwards. He was almost level 5 but now he's dead. And maybe, um, you know, Sharko was doing a great job. Lourdes was also very impactful, but I would say he would, but, you know, that was too early. Too much investment. This only makes sense if you have a massive fleet. I think Lukat was miscalculating his lead and had to make more units first to win those fights before he will be ready to siege. Maybe Warc Riders could be a great choice to support this Sharko. He has leadership, obviously, for those Warc Riders. And he could fight for the map control a bit more, force the Elven player to make much more pikemen than he has. And during all this time, Mustafa is doing a great job pushing from multiple sides. From middle, bottom and also from the top side. 400 command points only for Isengard's player Lukat now. He has nearly 10 power points collected, it was looking so good for him, but then he... Pretty much in, in 2 minutes, he was losing all his furnaces, getting really behind. And I would say the main reason for that is the early Siege Works upgrade to level 2 into the Ballistas. You know, you will need definitely some more units on the field, some more Urukai, Pikemen, Crossbowmen. Have enough frontline for your units, so you can win those fights. Yoda, welcome to the stream. Okay, I mean, this game should be won at this point from King Mustafa. But we have at least one more game to go in this series between Lukat against King Mustafa, boys, in the best of three. Which is the first game of the World Championship and the first game in the group stage between those two players. DJ Premier, are you able to play? So you might be able to get your games next because you are in the same group with Lukat and with King Mustafa. Yeah, the Fortress is gonna get uh, demolished now. He's gonna call it GG and that's gonna be the game number one. We are ready with the game number two, boys. This time it's gonna be Dwarves against Isengard. Interesting. So Lukat is, uh, you know, he wanna keep playing Isengard all the time because again, that's the main faction of Lukat. He likes to play with Isengard the most. King Mustafa was elves in the game number one. Now he gets to play dwarves. Dwarves against Isengard. Urukai against Guardians. The fool. Okay, boys. At the bottom side, we have the orange Isengard player Lukat, and his opening at the top side is the red dwarf player King Mustafa was able to win the previous game as Elves against Isengard on the map for of Isen. Let's see if we can see the same performance also with the Dwarves. And I think Dwarf faction is really snowballing faction in Rise of the Witch King. Once you have a lead, you can dominate the game absolutely and it would look like it's 100% one-sided because once you have a lead with Dwarves, you can keep pressuring and your opponent will be never released from the dark spell of the Dwarven power. But if you mess up your early mid game, I think your late game is gonna be a bit tough. Because dwarves, they like to go for a push, they go, like to go for a rush, they like to go for these big early pushes with multiple guardians, with pikemen. And they wanna deal as much damage as they possibly can to you. So they wanna have the advantage from the beginning of the game. 
and if you can somehow scout the mineshafts really nicely and you see it coming, you can potentially be able to protect yourself. And that's a risky start against dwarves. He's gonna start with the work packs. Again, I've I think mentioned it multiple times already. Work packs are not my most favorite units in the game. And I think you will need multiple of these work packs to actually do something. But yeah, with that being said, let's see. Let's see. Uh, there is a mineshaft already from uh, King Mustafa. He has a mineshaft here. Hall of Warriors into the Guardians. So he's not gonna go for the pikemen. I think he's gonna go for an early push. The builder here from Lucar is scouting this area, but Mustafa is gonna building. Is gonna be building a mineshaft here at the middle of the map. Urukpit is up on the field now. Another work pack is gonna be joining the fight. I think work packs. If you have like two, three battalions of these, you can go harassment all the time. You can deal a great amount of damage, which could be good against those mineshafts. You know, to have mobile units at your side of the map. Again, one of them is not gonna be enough to do anything because those mineshafts, they cannot only be used for a push, but you can also use them to defend yourself. Okay, crossbowman, which is interesting. Ali, thank you so much for the follow, by the way. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate that. Okay. Okay, boys. Eisengasm. <laughs> nice name, a nice name, dude. I like your name, dude. <laughs> nice name. Okay, so Guardians are here, only one battalion, so I don't think it's gonna be very effective because crossbowmen are coming at the same time. He's also gonna use the Kree which is smart because, you know, you can use your buff from the whole ability and then you have the debuff so you can make the enemy units weaker. Crossbowmen, they gotta move. You don't wanna be in close range ever against those Guardians. For me, they are, the, one, of, they are one of the best and strongest swordsmen in the game. You know, about cost efficiency. Because in compared to half troll Swordsmen and Black Numenorians, they cost less. They cost only 300 each. So a bit more than Black Orcs. But they are hitting like an absolute truck on those structures. And they are also very tanky at the same time. With level 2, they have a charge attack. And you gotta love Dwarven units. Those Guardians, they are looking so damn strong, boys. Okay, but luckily he was able to, you know, protect this furnace here. There is another Guardian, and that's what I meant before. If you can keep doing that all the time, if you can protect yourself against the early pushes, you should be in a great situation. And I think the mistake from King Mustafa was to send those units out one by one. Whenever we see that, it's not ending up very successful. I would say you will nef definitely need some more units to deal the damage you are looking for. But at the same time, he's also gonna go for the creep at the top left side. And ints for dwarves actually very great because you can here make hobbits and I think they are really cost efficient. They have a lot of impact on the game, especially when it comes to deal with enemy heroes. As we know, they are dealing, you know, bonus damage to heroes. And, you know, you, do, you should not underestimate the power of the hobbits. Size doesn't matter everything, as you guys know. A pretty terrible stat for dwarves, I agree. Um, and that's what I mean. I mean, now Lukat has a chance. But also last game, Lukat was ahead at some point. But I think he couldn't execute the game as much as he wanted to. I really hope he's not gonna make the same mistake again in this game by building the siege works really early again. And the power of those uh, work packs when they are grouped like this, quite mobile, you can take down those mine shafts really fast. And that's how we wanna play against dwarves. This Vernus is gonna also give him some decent amount of vision control. And if you don't if you don't see any mine shafts around this area, then you are actually in a good spot against the dwarves. Because he was able to take down two guardians already without taking any damage. This the cave pads around the fortress are giving Lukat a lot of vision control. That's the vision control he has. And I think that's the upgrade you wanna go for as Isengard against goblins or potentially against dwarves. King Brent is on the field now. The work packs they are they keep pressuring all the time. King Brent's slam shot can be very effective against those clumped units. I like the way Lukat is playing the game number two. And this one is looking great for the Polish player. And I think Yoda is proud now. <laughs> okay. 450 command points for Isengard, 400 command points for the Dwarf player, but he has still the upper hand. He keeps the pressure all the time. You have six power points collected now by the Isengard player. He can always go for the, for the War Chant. Urukai hitting level two. No Lancers on the field, I mean no Battle Wagon on the field just yet, but that's gonna change soon. However, the Battle Wagon with the Banner Carrier upgrade is gonna, you know, kinda get negated from the cave pads from Isengard. As you know, 
this ability is able to nullify enemy leadership, right? Pretty damn effective. Okay? Uh, he was actually using Rallying Call here, which is kind of interesting. I mean, Isengard players should just disengage here. You don't need to lose your units for no reason. But it looks like he wanted desperately to take down this or to capture this in. And he will be losing potentially all his units for that. Crossbowmen are, uh, are as fast as Guardians, so as long as they keep running away, they should be good to go. Uh, this furnace is gonna be taken down next. Lurz is on the field for Lukat. Lukat has to keep up the pressure now, that's really important. But, you know, King Brent is gonna try his hardest to, you know, deny that from happening. Again, his slam shot is very effective against clumped units, dealing massive damage, splash damage. Okay. I mean, Dwarven player will be just capturing this again. There was a mistake from Isengard player there. He should just run away after seeing the, the Dwarven player using the uh, rallying call. <clears throat> Isengard went for the water chant, so he has buff and debuff. Lourdes is almost level 2, that's gonna unlock the carnage. And I think level 4 is gonna be very effective. Why you ask King? Glad you ask King, because then you can cripple down this King Brand so he can't move. Then you put on the sword, go in slow range, you know, in close range, I mean. And then use Carnage, and then you can take him down really fast. Really, really fast. Okay. So, he's almost level 2, boys. Almost level 2. Battle Wagon on the field with uh, the Banner upgrade on it. We are getting more of these Battle Wagons potentially later on. I mean, Lourdes is also a great choice against Battle Wagon, because as soon as you see him, you can just right-click him and force him to go back. Warven player can always go for the heal at this point, or for the rebuild. Just in case. Oh, he has Man of Deal. Okay, I take it back, guys. I'm blind. He has Man of Deal upgrade on those on this battle wagon. Um, which is good, I guess. I mean, it's very effective. So you don't have a counter pretty much. You know, maybe heroes are countering you. But Lourdes is only level, what, 2? So he's not gonna deal too much damage. Oil Barrel will be used on this furnace level 2. And yeah, I mean, he needs to just be careful with this battle wagon. There are Pikemen. I don't know what he's, what he's doing here. He's taking way too much damage. Oh, nice slam shot from King Brent. Lourdes is using his Carnage, getting level 3 now. He's microing around and they are able to shoot while they are moving. And I think that's gonna be the same situation like in the previous game. Because the Warwind player has now the upper hand. He has, by the way, also heal now. Which will be used. Uh, the work packs are getting one-shotted here from this Man of Tail on the Battle Wagon and the help of this King Brent, who's almost level 4. Um, Battle Wagon has to be careful now. Lourdes is shooting him down, by the way. He might die. Oh, nice one. Nice catch with this pikeman here. Very important to take down this battle wagon. He also lost this furnace here, unfortunately, to those pikeman units. But he was luckily able to save this one. So we have 475 command points for the dwarf player now. He has hobbits, more pikemen and guardians are coming. Another battle wagon is on his way. On the other side, we have 500 command points for the Isengard player. He was able to expand in the side lanes a little bit. It's a level 2 battalion here. Should be able to get away. Warchan will be used now and also Kribin. He's fully committing to that fight. Uh, Hobbits can deal a lot of damage, as you know, to this uh, Lord. So he's... He needs to be careful. The builder might be taken down. Hey, Poof Poof more. Thank you so much for the, for the sub, dude. I really appreciate that. Thank you. A lot. Means a lot to me. Puff, puff, M0, just subscribe. Um, Lourdes is almost level 4, so level 4 will be unlocking the cripple as you know, and then he can cripple down this King Brent, use Carnage afterwards and take him down. Carnage is still on cooldown though. <clears throat> and that's what I mean, you know, Hobbits, they are pretty strong, they cost only 150 each, so very cost efficient as well. We have Sharko now on the field from the Isengard player, but let's, let's be honest, you know, he has multiple Hobbits. So he has such a great counter. Uh, great player, thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate it. And welcome to the stream, dude. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Okay. The mineshaft is gonna be potentially taken down. I mean, he has not many units around anymore. I don't know why he's or where he's running. Can't really tell you. There is no escape. Uh, Lourdes might be in trouble. But, I mean, the fact that he's forcing all the enemy units to chase him down... Gives him the time he needs. He has now 550 command points. The work pit is still level 1 only. Uh, yes, we have two heroes, but the problem is he has anti-hero units on the field. And a really strong King Brand. Battle Wagons with um, Men of Deal. 
Charku has to be careful. Oh, he needs to pay attention. Yes, he does. And he will be able to get away. Lourdes is running for his life. Curious about the damage output from this Man of Steel on him. This level 2 pikeman is potentially going to be taken down. And the Dwarven player King Mustafa is going for another attack. He needs to be careful with this uh, level 1 Sharku. Takes a lot of damage from King Brent. 10 power points collected now. Will he go for the Devastation once again? I think he needs to. Because he's really short on money. Okay. I mean, Isengard is now Black Orcs. I think that's a great choice to get this in. Because you can also kind of spam this area a little bit. They cost also only 250 each. So they cost less, much less than your Urukai. But are almost as strong as Urukai. So many hobbits, yeah. Exactly, Lourdes. Uh, really close to level 4 and even more hobbits now after the hobbit summon. He's being surrounded. Nice slam shot from this King Brent. Battle Wagon is taking a bit of damage here. Lourdes has to run. I mean, Frodo, Merry, per Peregrine, Tuck <laughs> and Samwise Gamgee. The gang is here. Look how many hobbits are shooting. Luckily, you are able to dodge the shoot damage, you know, because it's like a skill shot. Not, kind, not skill shot, but... It has a travel time, so you can dodge while moving away. And as you know, if you don't dodge, you will see your heroes dying in a second against this many hobbits. And yeah, that's a perfect army. He's gonna go for the Wildman of Dunland, by the way. I don't know about that one. I can tell you how effective this is gonna be. He needs to use it offensively. Definitely offensively. I think that's gonna be the case. Because he's moving now with the warp packs forward. I mean... He might be forced to use it defensively. Level 4 now, Lords. So King Brent has to be careful. He has heal on cooldown, so it can't be used. Forcing Lucat to make those um, arrow tower expansions. I mean, Lucat, even if he loses the series, it's not a big deal. That's a group stage with four members. Uh, so he has the chance still to win against the other two members, but it's easier said than done because we have also DJ Premier in the same group. Armand for president, make Isengard great again. Uh, don't tell me that it's you, dude. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Okay, nice slam shot once again from this King Brand. He's actually very impactful this game. Uh, Wildman, did he use them? No, he didn't use them. He is still holding them. But the problem is, if he uses that here, it would be a major mistake. He's gonna use it on top of the army, though. And that's not bad, because um, slam shot was just you, so it's on cooldown. And King Brand is actually locked down already from the cripple. And Lourdes is gonna draw the sword, use the carnage potentially, should be using the carnage to try to get the lasted on this guy with level 5. Yeah, there we go, level 5. That means leadership is gonna be unlocked. He was even able to deal with those Wildmen of Dunland from the summon. Not many of them are left anymore. But the leadership is gonna be very impactful and very helpful for sure. Another mineshaft is coming up. And that's what I meant, you know, you lose one fight against dwarves and then you will never be able to leave your own side of the map anymore. Uh, more units are coming from the middle. We have some harassment going on here with those black orcs. Luckily he has some furnaces, one of them is even level 2, which is pretty nice. He has still uh, 6, uh, 75 command points available. I would still say that uh, Saruman could be a great choice in this situation, because as we know, you know, Wizard Plus, Fireball, very impactful. Even though there are so many hobbits on the field. So I think Saruman is really risky to go for. Uh, when you make him and you lose him without being able to do anything, you lose so much money. Oh, nice one. Actually, look at this. Nice one. Sharku and those war packs. That's really impactful, guys. If you kill one of these battle wagons, he loses 1,000 resources. 500 for the battle wagon and 500 for the upgrade for the Man of Tail. And now he's getting more units on the field. Has a really strong hero like Lord's level 5. Sharku is also getting more and more experience, he has 9 power points almost collected, has still 675 command points available. On the other side we have 770 command points available. There's a statue by the way, but again Lourdes is hitting like a truck. Carnage ability, look how much, how hard he's hitting boys. Level 6, level 8 will be a mean, will mean for Isengard even more money with this pillage ability. The mineshaft has been taken down, no more reinforcements can come. And he will lose all these units. The builder is running for his life. The statue is gonna be taken down next. Yes, 11 and a half power points collected. So he, he has the chance now to go for the undermine, which could be kinda okay, I guess. But Isengard has now leadership. I think undermine is not gonna be able to one shot every single unit. He's gonna save for 15. On the other side, we have 14 power points collected for Isengard. Okay, this game might lead to late game stage, and I'm really curious. 
what's gonna happen between Isengard against Dwarves in the late game. Let's see. Okay, so we have a bunch of units here. The Mineshaft is going to be taken down. King Brent is back in the business, in the Mineshaft. There is a level 3 Black Orc Warrior Battalion, so I don't know how many Mineshafts he was able to kill. But this one is gonna be taken down for sure. Charku is healing up, I mean, he's full health, not doing anything right now. Let's see the damage output from this. You see that, guys? You see that? How much he's, how, they're, how hard they're hitting on these lords. <laughs> That's crazy. But they are alone and they won't be able to do anything. The mineshaft has been taken down. The furnace is going to be taken down next. Battlewagon was able to clean up those Black Orc warriors. He keeps making more of these, which is okay. I think if you have like multiple of these battle wagons with men of deal, they are very effective. But again, you know, it's when you lose them, it's going to hurt you big time. And you're going to give so many power points to your opponent. He's going to go for the Field of Fires. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, he went for the Summon instead of Devastation. And now he's going to go for the Economic Power Point Ability from the Spellbook. I think it's okay. Um, he has not that many Lumber Mills on the field, though. I see only two. That's not worth it. You will need some more here at the backside, maybe. What's that? Did you guys see that here? Something was there. Okay, Barrage will be used, and the army from Isengard will be taken down. Let's go. Beautiful. Nice one. That was beautiful, man. Nice catch here. Just in time, taking down the entire Isengard army, boys. Furkan, welcome to the stream. Panther, welcome to the stream. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And now the Warwind player is moving from this side. He will be able... He was already able to take down this level 2 furnace. This level 2 furnace is going to be taken down next. The lumber mills are going down as well. And yeah, I mean, did the Barrage just change the outcome of the game? Because this fight was looking so great for him. He would be able to take down this level 2 mineshaft and this tower. And then he could pressure from this side. But, you know, when you are grouped like this, this kind of abilities from the spellbook are very effective. 525 command points only now. It's gonna be even less after losing this furnace. He's dropping to below 500 for the first time since a couple of minutes. The mineshaft, Hobbit Summon actually, into the Rallying Coal, interesting. That means Rallying Coal is not gonna be available for this fight. Lords has Cripple, can be using it on this King Brand. Will this be the case? Yes, it will. Draw the sword, my dude, and dive in. Warchan, and that's a fiesta. He has leadership plus buff against no buff, and he's debuffing the enemy units. There was a mistake from King Mustafa using it here. Because by the time they're gonna be here around this area, the buff is almost gonna be gone. Uh, he's using the sword. King Brand is gonna be definitely take. Oh, nice slam shot on those Wark Riders. But King Brand has been taken down level 8 lords. That means money for each kill on the enemy units for the Isengards player. But he is sitting only on 475 command points, boys. That's not much. And affording an upgrade for that? I don't know. He needs to definitely make some more Lumber Mills to have any value from this field of fires. Okay, on the other side, for the Dwarf player, we have 750 command points for King Mustafa, boys. 750, Sharku is level 5 still, he has 7 power points collected after heal, Hobbit, Barrage and the Rallying Call. He's gonna get some more Men of Deal units now on the field, and no level 3 just yet. Double Barracks, keeps making also more Battle Wagons all the time. The level 3 Furnace, the Commitment, will this gonna be enough? The Hobbits are almost gone anyway, they don't have too much time, I mean Sam has to leave Middle-earth soon it might be enough it is gonna be enough that's huge taking down a level three furnace like this but again look he's getting plus six all the time for each kill on those guardians which is very impactful and you know it's gonna give you much more value if you kill like battle wagons heroes like king brand you're gonna get so much money after that uh, sharku is gonna be able to capture this one but i think the hobbit is, should be joining the fight if yes, we're gonna see how much damage he's gonna be able to deal to this Sharku. Let's see. Oh, they're not using the stones. Now they're gonna use the stones. Okay, I mean, one is not enough, obviously. Nice trample. <laughs> Alright, we have a fight here. He's gonna use Wildman of Dunland from the spellbook. Uh, Lourdes has leadership, by the way, as you know. Leadership is impactful. The battle wagons are microing around all the time, trying to shoot down the enemy units. Hobbits are doing a great job, but this fight is looking very good here for the Isengard player, look at. The only good, the good thing is about those battle wagons for the Isengard player, he doesn't need to be worried about his structures, because they're gonna need ages to take down one of the furnaces, for example. So as long as you can keep killing the main army, you should be good to go. 
I can't tell you why he's disengaging. Lourdes has to be around this area, definitely. Can also put on the sword. He's almost level 9. And Isengard has 13 and a half power points collected. Has a lot of money. What is he saving for? Because Armory is now on the field for a while, but he still didn't purchase any upgrades or he didn't upgrade the Armory to level 2. But he can also, at this point, maybe try to save the money and give, go for Saruman. Would be a great choice. Man of Deal giving plus 7 for each kill from the pillage ability. And, you know, as long as he can defend himself and keep those Lumberman's alive, with the pillage from Lords, with the Field of Ires from the Spellbook, I think Isengard shouldn't run into money troubles any soon. And once he's done buying the upgrades here from the Armory, his units are gonna be very tanky as well. So let's see. Okay, Warchamp was not used, but Rallying Call was used on those units. 15 power points collected now for Lukat. Is he gonna go for something or is he gonna save for 25? Let's see what's gonna be his choice. Shark Sharku is also here. Baric is still on cooldown for a while. 12 power points collected from King Mustafa. Lourdes is level 9, ladies and gentlemen. And Isengard keeps filling those fights. That's really good for Lukat. And it looks like we might be able to see a game number 3. But, you know, we shall see. Oh, okay, Beast Slayer not dealing too much damage from King Brent. And Carnage will be used from Lourdes. And King Brent, once again, will be taken down by the young Lourdes. Pretty good. Charco is running for his life. And Arts when Art1 delay, a delay 94. Thank you so much for the follow, man. Appreciate it. And welcome to the stream, dude. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. 16 power points collected now for the Dwarf player, and we have 21 power points collected. One Battle Wagon has been taken down, and they can't do much at this point, because Lourdes has leadership, Lourdes is level 9, he's gonna force you back. Warg Sentry is coming up, the Builder has been taken down here from the Dwarf player, King Mustafa, and King Brand has been taken down once again. So the amount of money and time he needs to invest now to revive a level 8 King Brand is insane, but there's a Demolisher, okay, what? I didn't even see that. The Demolisher was able to take down the Uruk Pits and a couple of Furnaces. What a sneaky attack from the from the Dwarf player King Mustafa, ladies and gentlemen. What the heck? Look at this. Demolisher for the win. Okay. And yeah, actually this game, this, look at the Battle Wagons. Lourdes has been taken down as well. That's massive. He needs to invest now all his cash and all his money into these expansions. Not having barracks means you can't get more units. He has, like, he had, like, no production buildings left anymore. Oh, that's really Fiesta. I didn't even see that. How the hell was this Demolisher able to get into the backline? Lukat wasn't able to react. Oh, that's absolute Fiesta. Uh, Oil Barrel was used. Battle Wagons, they gotta disengage potentially. Actually, they are doing a great job. Look how much damage they are dealing with those Men of Tail upgrades on them. 22 and a half power points, Lukat has to replace the work pet. And I mean, now is the time for King Mustafa to go for a push, which is easier said than done because he doesn't have many units on the field anymore. But Baric is gonna be ready potentially for the next big fiesta battle. Hobbits are gonna be special summoned soon, and he has also 21 and a half power points collected already. So we're gonna definitely see some see some 25 power point action in this game from potentially both the players. There is a tower and a work sentry. Um, but, you know, Isengard tower is not very impactful without archers inside of it. So, and guardians are quite tanky, so should not be a big deal. Um, at this point, Lukat is definitely reviving his Lourdes again. Would be a shame if not, because Lourdes was MVP boys. He was able to kill King Brent multiple times. He has pillage ability, which is gonna give you, you know, much and much more resources over time. Charku is doing his thing, and yes, there we go. No, it's Grima. <laughs> it's actually Grima, aka Wormtongue, joining the fight for Isengard. And he has an escape with level 1. It can be very sneaky. Let's see. Okay, the furnace is gonna be taken down. We have also Gimli on the field, boys. Okay, level 2, leap attack unlocked. I mean, kinda risky, not gonna lie, because at this point he will have Lords back soon. And we shall see how effective Gimli can be against Lords once he's crippled down. I mean, Gimli is quite tanky, so it's gonna be harder to take him down than taking down the King Brand. That, you know, let's see. Okay, Sharku is level 6. He keeps making towers now to protect this area. Uh, Lourdes is back in the business, level 9.5. Hobbits will be summoned once again from King Mustafa. 
We have 24 power points collected, but Barrage is gonna be available soon. And that can change the fight and change the outcome of the game, by the way. If you can use it offensively, like for example here, in which you can not only hit the enemy units, but also enemy structures, he has such a great follow-up, you can go possibly for the finish. On the other side, we have 23 power points collected. Uh, pep, I don't know, man. 70 gold for Sam? Come on. <laughs> 70 gold for Sam. Only. Okay, 23 power points. I think Dwarven player will get it faster. Definitely faster. He has almost 25 collected already. And the combination with 25 plus Barrage? Oh my god. That can be devastating. What is he gonna go for? He's gonna go for the Summon Citadel. Alright. Will he use it offensively? That's what I meant before. Barrage, there we go. And Summon Citadel at the same time. Hitting the units, hitting the structures at the same time, the blue, blue fire, and now you can also use the launch, the mighty catapult. But, oh, the ballistas are taking it down in a second! Okay, but there we go, in your face! And all the expansions are goners! There we go, boys, beautiful, but Lord is using the carnage, will he be able to take it down? But the... I don't know what's going on here, absolute fiesta, by the way. Isengard has also now 25 power points collected. The Citadel has been taken down though, which is good, but he lost like a lot of units and a couple of those level 3 furnaces. And the thing is, he doesn't have many of these lumber mills on the field, boys. Hmm, I don't know man, 500 command points, Lutz is the only man remaining, he's gonna go for the summon dragon. He might be forced to use him defensively though, I hope not. Ossiafna, welcome to the stream. Okay, uh, Cripple will be used on Gimli, Lutz is pretty low and he has carnage on cooldown. Okay. He's gonna build up the expansions again, but he loses all the stuff. He's gonna use Summon Dragon by using Kreebane to get the vision control he needs. Summon Dragon is gonna try to take down some of these structures, the barracks, the level 2 archer range, the level 3 mineshaft. Uh, but he has no follow-up, unlike the dwarf player, you know, that's, that's the problem. Okay, Gimli is crippled, but there is no way he can take him down. I mean, Lourdes is very low and... I think Extro might be able or enough to take him down. Maybe not, because he's level almost 10. And this guy is only level 3. We shall see. Okay? Oh, close but not close enough. So he was able to survive. He's quite tanky, as mentioned before. So it's gonna take you a while to take him down. The level 3 armory. He was also able to purchase the heavy armor. But forge plates, have, uh, fire arrow upgrade. Still not purchased. This dragon was actually doing a great job. Boys. Look how many structures he was able to kill. And indeed, there are no more production buildings after this forge works is gonna be taken down. For a dwarf player. That means, again, if Lukat somehow manages to deal with this army here, or leap attack was used, um, he will have some time before King Mustafa is gonna be able to bring up more units. Look, this level 3 mineshaft. Oh, he's not gonna be able to finish it, right? No. <laughs> Unfortunate. I mean, he has also only 7... I uh, guess what, 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 what means only he has 775 command points. But game number two, two dude, he has 7 power points collected. Maybe will be forced... Oh, the battle wagon has been taken down. Maybe will be forced to go <clears throat> for industry or devastation with 10. Devastation could be a great choice at this point. Yes, it's gonna delay your power points a bit, but you will need it. You will need the extra money. And I also think like that Lukat didn't make a great use of this field of fire upgrade from the spellbook. I didn't see that many... Um, that many lumber mills on the field, and he keeps losing stuff. Glyn is on the field now, and King Dane, uh, King Dane is also on the field. Oh, he was able to take him down level five. I mean, Krima can do anything. You know what I'm saying? What is Krima able to do at this point? Level five unlocks the Slayer, by the way. That's gonna give him armor. I mean, damage, attack speed, movement speed. And yeah, the. Game is gonna be over, and what a what a interesting ending. I, it was looking so good for Lukat again, but Mustafa was able to win two games, kinda coming back from behind. And that's the first series in the World Championship, ladies and gentlemen. Mustafa was able to win. Beautiful.